Have you ever had a sore throat for about four days and then finally went to an urgent care? And when the doctor opens your mouth and looks into it, they audibly gasp. I have strep throat. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I might have strep throat, but that is not going to stop me from talking, let alone talking about Guild Wars 2 updates. Thankfully, I'm on day two of my antibiotics and my throat feels much, much better. So I'm, I'm good. But um, yes, let's talk about the new updates for Guild Wars 2. This includes the legendary armory, as well as the new Twisted Marionette, which is accessible through the scrying pool and is a 50 player instance. Uh, but if you go to the public version, it can go up to 75 players. So it might be a little bit easier on the public version, but the public version is on a timer. So it might not be up all the time. Uh, I'm just basically gonna go through and give my, my overall feelings to the first and the second day. Now this is currently the second day, uh, the two days that this event is going on. So I wanna talk about how I feel about the difficulty, the player reactions, and everything that I'm kind of seeing and hearing, and everything that I'm seeing and hearing in my own brain. So, let's just jump right in. Okay, so, uh, going into the Twisted Marionette, I was extremely excited. Of course, I hadn't played Twisted Marionette. None of us have played Twisted Marionette uh, since they last had it back in Season 1. Now that it's finally returned, everyone was super eager to get in and play it. Now, my very first playthrough of the new Twisted Marionette was a fail. In fact, not only was my first playthrough a fail, my second was a fail, my third was a fail, my fourth was a fail, and my fifth was a fail. I think on the sixth time and the seventh time, I did manage to, to snag two wins. I was very happy about that. Um, but initially going into it and playing through this new version of the Twisted Marionette, Playing through it, I was really engaged. And I think that is a special feeling in Guild Wars 2 that sometimes we like to say we don't feel all the time. So I really enjoy this event because it is very engaging from a personal player's perspective. Um, I'm always like trying to see what CC skills I need to use, if I need to heal or res a couple people. It all really depends on what role you're, you're filling. And this encounter does really shine and promote people to be playing builds that have crowd control and that are a bit more controlling in nature, a bit more bruisery in nature. And I think that is really cool. I posted a tweet and it's like, are people running full Zerker gear in Twisted Mar Marionette? Because let me tell you, if you're running full Zerker gear, if you do not have the pristine dodges and have vigor uptime, uh, like that's just maximum 100% on you and getting those dodges, you're going to go down super easily. So I think in terms of advice for this fight, I would definitely recommend people build a little bit more into toughness and vitality where you can, and also take some crowd control abilities and abilities that might give you a little, little bit more healing just so you can survive. Because if you're dead, you can't do DPS. And it doesn't matter if you have the highest DPS potential. If you're dead, once again, you can't do any of it. And I would also like to say that I have played as a support healer, uh, focusing on boon uptime, of course, like Firebrand. And I've seen some people say, don't play those, and that you only should go for damage. And once again, I would say that's actually the worst advice to give. You shouldn't just go for damage. You should go for, of course, having the ability to do some damage, but also being able to survive. And partially about surviving is if you have one healer in your subgroup, I. From my experience, it's worked out perfectly fine. So the difficulty has been absolutely amazing. I've loved feeling a challenge from a, a personal subgroup perspective. But the one thing I will say in terms of difficulty and in terms of what I'm somewhat seeing in, in people's reactions is the difficulty can be challenging, but it is sometimes just unfathomably annoying when it relies and the events could be failed because one person doesn't go in. One person goes instantly down because they don't have any, you know, they might be lacking in terms of gear. They might be lacking in terms of game experience. 
it is really crucial that everyone is on their A game. And to the point of not just their A game, to kind of an objective standard of how well you know Guild Wars 2. And if you're a new player, you might not be able to reach that at this moment. And it sometimes, you know, some lanes could fail because of your own uh, inexperience or your own mess ups. So it can feel really daunting and, you know, really rough when people call you out for it and the whole thing fails and you're on your last try. And, you know, I have seen people get called out and it is really weird and strange in terms of a of such a critical design. It's really hard to, even in raids, manage nine other people uh, and getting them all to situate them together. But to have to manage 49 other people while also being distanced away from them and not able to even help them and to be randomly selected onto platforms, it's a really strange feeling that hasn't really been felt in a long time. And more so because of the smaller squad sizes. It's 50 players instead of the, I think, original like 150, 200 people in a map. So there's less players and less player means more opportunity to mess up. So you really have to be objectively to a skill level of Guild Wars 2 of understanding, of crowd control, of being able to dodge, being able to heal yourself, uh, being able to actually understand which mechanic you're doing in your lane, and also being able to, you know, res if you can, and knowing when to res, or knowing when it's it's a fruitless effort, let them die rather, because if you go in for the res, you're gonna also die, and you're just gonna fail anyway. It can be a lot to juggle. So in terms of the difficulty on that aspect, I do think it's somewhat bold. I don't want to say they shouldn't do it, but I want to just say it is bold and I can understand where people begin to question it. I've even seen that Shaman make tweets uh, somewhat criticizing this this way of, of boss encounter building. And I want to say that I hear that and I agree with it in part because there's so many people. It's It's almost impossible to expect everyone to be the very same level uh, as the highest player on that map in terms of, of, of the entire game understanding. So yeah, it is a little strange. I, would, I wouldn't be mad at them making sure and fine tuning the platform placements because I have been in some groups where each platform has had three people on it, but one platform has only had one person on it. So I wanna just make sure and reiterate to Maybe there's potential bugs going on. I'm not entirely sure. It could be a matter of, you know, how many players are in the lane and they go in, of course. Um, but I have seen that where each platform is three and everyone goes in and one person is on one platform. And it's like, why didn't that at least fill up to two? To have two people, two platforms go two, two and the rest three. It's a little weird and strange at times. But I just want to emphasize the, the, that there could be some bugs that we might not necessarily be super aware of. Um, but in terms of that, if that's not a bug, I would definitely say to re to take a second look at it. Um, and in terms of in terms of the lanes, I think it's pretty fine. But the specific events where you go up and fight the specific champion for the marionette to be damaged and to get and to, to break the chains, it can be a little rough at times because you have no control. And I think especially because it's 50 people in a, in a private squad, five lanes it's 10 each lane it's not like dragon stand where there's only three lanes and it's a full map so it's like 200 people divided by three uh there's so many more people to actually carry and not only that but 10 people in a lane get then divided into groups of two because it's five platforms 10 people in a lane there's only two people on each platform and you can't jump to new to the other platforms to go help them Sometimes you can, and I want to uh, acknowledge, sometimes you can help other people on other platforms. Of course, by using the Inspire after you kill your generator, definitely use that. But I want to also point out there could be some strategies in terms of pulling your mobs and bosses to the corner, the, the edges where each platform kind of touches each other. Because sometimes you can cleave. Some abilities and, and skills have enough of an AOE radius that they'll actually cleave over onto the other platform. I've done this with heals. I've done this with like Firebrand, uh, Tome 5 skills, effects and buffs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can sometimes kind of sneak in there and help out a little bit. In terms of the rewards, it's also 
a nice time to get some daydreamer weapon skins or some mystic coins if you need them. So I would highly recommend people going in and playing at least the public events. Uh, if you want to go for the private events, I would definitely recommend bringing some friends along. If you have a dedicated guild that happens to be doing that, that's great. Um, but I also want to reiterate to, of course, be kind to people. It can be really infuriating, and I gotta admit, I'm guilty of this sometimes, of you feel like you can't just, you can't, it's difficult because you can't make someone be you in terms of, you, like, you might think that you have a really strong understanding of Guild Wars 2, and I think objectively, I have a pretty solid understanding of Guild Wars 2, but I and other people have to remember that there are new people in the game, there are new people who just picked up Guild Wars 2 who might have 300 mastery points, but they weren't around for Twisted Marionette, so they don't know what they're doing in terms of how they approach the mechanics and how they build their own character to be able to withstand this, this boss. But uh, overall, be cognizant of that and remember that not to flame people. I have some people, I have seen some people flame others and it's like, okay, you don't have to get that far. But um, communication is important. And if you are new, listen to map chat especially if you happen to be in a lane and it's full and you should be in another lane because they have gone with this avenue of making it so difficult communication will be involved so open those map chats talk to people it's a social game and you should be social where you feel comfortable and you should also approach other people kindly in social aspects so thank you everyone for coming those are my thoughts on the marionette i Highly recommend trying it out at least a little bit. Um, I really enjoy it. I like this difficulty. I would like to see more difficulty, more focus on break bars and other builds come into Guild Wars 2. Perhaps not at such a degree of making it a locked private 50 squad boss because it can be very difficult. But for raids, dungeons, and fractals, I think that'd be really cool. So thank you everyone. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, there's a link down below. I would love to hear your comments about the Twisted Marionette. Do you guys think it's too easy? Do you think it's too hard? Do you think it's hit a really nice spot? And subscribe, like, share, and all that stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone! Mwah.